Hi guys, welcome back to Brothers in Gaming. Uh, we're back with our quarterly report for the year, which we said we do. Um, so we're going to try and make this as quick as possible, but um, obviously we're not going to be able to blaster it. Uh, but we'll do our best. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at where we stand in the division. Obviously we stand at 1 and 3 right now. But if we go to the division standings, you'll see, as you can see here, we're not on the bottom of our division. We are actually tied with the rest of the division, bar... The Oakland Raiders, for whatever reason, who I think arguably are probably, hell. yeah, I think they're one of the best teams, like, in the division. I was going to say, we should mention as well, that we haven't looked at any of the other teams' records across the league. No. So this is news to us as well, so I'm completely surprised that our division is so shit. I didn't yeah. know that they would. That we've all lost. Well, to put the curtain back, I, I've actually looked, Ryan hasn't seen it, so. That's cool, I was probably smoking or something. Yeah, so, I mean, so I've seen them, and I can tell you that uh, it is quite surprising well, that's good in point. the league. So let's look around the rest of the, our conference, at least. So in the AFC East, the Dolphins, the Patriots have not lost a, a game yet. <laughs> Bullshit. The Patriots have obviously uh, haven't played a game. They've had a bye week in week yeah. four, so, yeah. or whatever, so that's fine. So Dolphins are currently sitting at the top of the NFL table, for whatever reason. Don't know how, but there we go. 4 0, they're doing good. The AFC South is quite close, apart from the Texans have dropped three games, which is uh, not surprising with their quarterback situation. And in the AFC North, that is strong. Oh, that's a strong division. That's a strong yeah. division. Pittsburgh and the bottom with a draw. That's ridiculous. Fuck, I can't be tired the game. So just moving on quickly to the NFC now, we'll have a look. The NFC North, I mean, Packers are at the top as usual, but the rest of the division is really, really close. And the Packers are only a game ahead anyway. Yeah, exactly, so that's not a big deal. In the south, the Panthers and the Buccaneers are kind of close, but it looks like the Panthers are going to take that one. Saints are going to struggle this year, and I'll show you why a bit later on. Uh, NFC East, Eagles are leading that one as the Giants. Redskins have dropped uh, three of their last games, so uh, and again, I can show you why soon. Cowboys are sitting pretty at the moment, trying to push their way back up. And in the NFC West, that's all pretty close, to tell the truth, apart from for whatever reason, the Cardinals. Fucking who are bottom of the division, yeah. which doesn't make so much, very much sense, to be honest. So there you have it guys, so the Dolphins lead the NFL, followed by the Eagles and then the Patriots. So, what I was talking about uh, earlier was why they might be having issues, so we're going to quickly go to the injury report and have a look at some big names. Got to right. do some big ones then, yeah. There are some big names, but not out for huge lengths of time, but we'll see. The Chiefs and us have gone away so far. Quad Jackson's a pretty big injury for the Colts, but I mean they've probably got other guys there. Cowboys, Sean Lee unsurprisingly is injured again. Zach Martin out for eight weeks is a massive blow for them because their offensive line is what makes them tick, yeah. which is a big deal. Dolphins getting away with just a tight end at the moment. Uh, again, Eagles. Excuse me, a couple of quick players, but I mean nothing especially bad. Sean Renfrew's a backup, so they haven't got anything to worry about too much. 49ers have had a bit of a bite of the injury bug, and they've got some good players out as well, but not for too long, luckily for them. So, Oh, they've got Jermichael Finley, though. Yes, they have got Michael Finley. He's one of the pickups. Yeah. And I'll show you that later as well. There's some other names to look at. Uh, we'll be easy out for a couple of weeks with the Giants. Jaguars, there's a couple of big names there to worry about. Uh, whoops, sorry. Just changed to quarterback. Uh, Jets, Jaquan Jarrett, still out. He's out for the season. Lions, just Don Carey. Um, Packers, there's a couple of good guys there. I think they can go without without those guys. So they've got Harkin and Dix back up there. And they got Joy Nelson still, so I think they're going to be okay. And um, Devontae Adams. Yes, so they, I think they they should be fine. They should be alright. Gronk's out for two weeks, which is going to probably hurt the Patriots' chance a bit. But that's have, just normal. Yeah, but the rest of the squad is completely fine. So yeah, and they've... Scott Chandler's backing him up anyway. So <coughs> Scott Chandler's wicked. Yeah. Raiders have only lost Ben Healy, so I'm surprised actually because I thought the reason they might be losing so badly is because of the injuries. In injuries, yeah. I think I did see Khalil Mack was out for a little bit, but that is about it. I didn't see anybody else. No. That was, late. That was early in the year, so... And that's only one guy, so you've got to wonder how much that would actually impact them anyway. Exactly. Anyway, moving on, we've got the Rams. No massive ones here, just their rookie, Ooh, Craig Robertson. Desmond Broke Bishop out for like... I don't think that's going to be the end of his career. No, it's but that's a nasty one, that's injury. Big. 39 weeks is ridiculous, like... That's a bad injury, that is. Yeah, so Desmond Bishop is done for a while after getting signed recently. The Ravens got like big injuries now. They banged up. Rashad Perriman, who is the new guy, he's out for six. There's Kalechus Os Osameli. He's been out for about nine, actually. So that's that's only just gone down a little bit. T Sizzle, that was Dumaville, is out for the year. Jeremy Zuta, and also now Justin Forsett is out. So that's some huge uh, losses there. Here is the Redskins. You can see Kirk Cousins is out for the season. Ah, that's, that's cool. why they're going to be dropping a couple of games. Yeah. So unless RG3 can pull them out of it, then they're going to be struggling a bit there. 
along with losing Alfonso Tenard, who I believe is a star. Teron Armstead, the starting left tackle for the Saints, is out for the season for 41 weeks with an Achilles tear, which is horrible. That's nasty. And Jairus Bird and the starting right guard all are out as well, so I think we're going to struggle for a while. I'm going to try to keep Drew Brees off the ground. Yeah, well, exactly. Not the best, uh, not the best O-line to begin with anyway. No. Steelers, again, nothing massive. We've got a couple of guys out, like Cameron Hayward, Steve McClendon, Marcus Wheaton's out for a while, which will suck. Um, not much there. Titans have all right. Marcus Mariota for three weeks and Zach Mettenberger, so I think they're probably going to lose their next game, whatever. So they're Who's gonna, they got? I don't know, but they're going to drop their next game, yeah, I imagine. Definitely. Vikings, just a couple of guys on defense. Shrew Floyd's a big deal, but that's only three weeks, so I'd be okay with that. Ashon Jeffrey being out is huge for the Chicago Bears, though, so that's going to make them struggle a bit on offense. They're just going to have to lean on Matt Forte and Kevin White, I suppose. Yeah, they haven't got much else, have they? Well, not that I know of, no. Bengals, Bills, all good. Uh, Chris Harris is out for a week, so no biggie there. Browns again, not lost a lot. Larry English, former Charger, he's out for a bit. Cardinals have lost some guys, but no one big apart from Mike Mikey Pye, and that's for one week. John Brown being out for a while is a big deal for them, but they've got Larry Fitzgerald and Michael Floyd, uh, Michael Floyd so whatever. And back to us then. So, that's the injuries out of the way. Like I mentioned, there are some signings as well, so we're going to quickly go there as well, so we can have a look at, say... Um, a couple of guys who've gone to new teams. Who free agency expect. pickups. Yeah, free agency pickups. Yeah. Um, so the the uh, 49ers have signed David Stewart, which is a good idea, seeing as they've probably just lost a guy in uh, for injury. Uh, Frank Summers, Javier Arenas, I know that name. Harris Harrison's gone back to the 49ers. Uh, Jawai Lattimore has gone to the uh, Rams to replace Desmond Bishop, who's out for the year. Redskins have signed Dustin Vaughan at quarterback, obviously because Kirk Cousins is gone. Yeah. We made some signings here, you can see we've got Chris Durham, we signed Davin Joseph on the line at right guard to shore that up. Antron Roll, we've already discussed, and John Connor at fullback, and we dropped uh, Eric Laurie. I didn't really want to, but John Connor is just so much of a better fit. He's an upgrade, isn't he? So. Yeah. Just moving on now, I can't really see any massive names here. Uh, Broncos, Mike Nugent, Dunk Rayola. Deontay Thomas, who we signed, him, and our Pollard has gone to the Colts, which is quite a big deal. Um, Joe Thomas, other than that... Well, these are all and that's, now, and that's now pre-season there, so there you go, guys. Not a lot of guys moving around compared to what happened in the pre-season. The pre-season, there was a lot more going on, Yeah, really. So, I think team rosters are set now, and yeah. probably any free agency pickups that happen from now on are going to be to combat injury yeah. and fill roster spots. Like that's so. what I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the last thing I want to get to now, or the last but one I should say, is we're just going to have a quick look at the team stats and see how we're doing from this point. Um, not the whole team as a whole, but just like individual player stats. Um, as you can see, Karen Clemens has been awful so far. He's thrown eight picks in two games. <laughs> Christian Pond, on the other hand, has improved a lot more. He threw two picks last game with one touchdown, so that's dropped his rating a bit. But I think that's pretty respectable, honestly. I mean, his completion percentage is 65%, which isn't that bad. I'd like to get in the 70s if I can, but then he is not a great quarterback. So no, Melvin Gordon has been struggling in the running game. I think <coughs> the running game in general has been pretty poor. Three touchdowns on the ground, but only 118 yards in four games is. Well, I mean, look at the averages for everybody. It's just, know, there's it's only three people who actually run the ball. It's the, miserable. Is it, is it is miserable <laughs> as fuck. Luckily, in the passing game, we got a bit more luck. So Austin Charles has been the main target with 300 yards, along with Dontrell Inman, which is good because it's rare in a Madden game for us anyway that we find our starting wide receiver has some of the most yards on the team. No, it's normally a tight end. Isn't yeah, it? or something ridiculous like that. So there we go. Deontay Thomas has had a couple of big games as well, so that's good for him. Mum Gordon has got two uh, receiving touchdowns, so he's got five in four games. So. If he carries on this rate, he'll probably be close to 16 touchdowns. Yeah, he which should be, be. Which would be awesome. It will help, won't it? Yeah. Blocking the line has actually been fairly solid in pass blocking, which I'm surprised about. They've only let four yeah. sacks here. There's probably more sacks than that, but they've, it's only been their fault four times. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a cold, like I said. On defense, Matt Daniels is leading the team with 20, with 20 tackles. He's been probably one of the highlights in the defense so far Definitely. in terms of being just consistent. Yeah. Denzel Perryman. I don't know, it's like, you don't seem to see him, but he always has the most tackles on the team in yeah. every game. Yeah, which he's is always cool. there. Mantateo is everywhere, and he's like, he's got, there, there he's seven tackles for loss. I think he leads the team in tackles for loss. Yeah, that's just 
dope. He's in the battery on every play. So he's got wicked player recognition. So Mantateo has been good so far, really good so far. Steve Williams is probably the only tackles he's got. And he's got a sack and a forced fumble. Um, James Harrison obviously has got three tackles for loss and a sack. Dion Jordan is tied with the most sacks on the team with two and a half. He's actually playing right outside, so uh, sorry, left outside, so he's having a all right, so all right, yes, but yeah. Ben Gardner, right? In the preseason, he was amazing, and so far he's got eight tackles, which is all right. Three tackles for loss, which is good, and two and a half sacks from a three-four left end. Now, to me, that is pretty, pretty good. Well, yeah, that's good because he's supposed to be like a run stopping and a penetrating end. Yeah, not like actually getting to the. The quarterback, like yeah, this. he's like tied for the team lead of sacks, and he's not even a pass rusher, sort of thing. That's so crazy, isn't it? He's doing quite well. I gotta point out as well, Antron Roll, we've only had him for one game, and he has eight tackles, which doesn't look like a lot, but when you actually look at where he is on our attacking leaderboard, he's not that low down. In one game, eight In tackles one game, is quite a lot. It's quite a lot, yeah. But it's for interceptions, Darrell Stuckey has the only interception for the team so far. We haven't been getting any takeaways, which is what's letting us down so far, I think. And we've got one field goal made, one attempted. Oh, wait, we missed one of the extra points. We did. <sighs> we Sorry, did. there's no we. I missed an extra point. <laughs> and it was garbage. <laughs> uh, kick return, not too bad. Nothing special. And punt return, well, you know, we had one good punt return. That's about it, really. We never tend to do a lot of special teams anyway. It's hard. Yeah, I think so. So, we'll just quickly go to the NFL. And we can see the leaders in all those, uh, in all those categories. Passing. Well, Nick Foles apparently. Oh well, I'm not gonna take that. He's got 93 yards. So we'll say Tony Romo's got the highest pass rating at the moment. 13 and 2 is ridiculous. Uh, I think 10 and 1 is really good as well. Yeah. Max Mayer is out. Uh, Tom Brady 9 and 1. Only 952 yards. He's running the ball a lot. And Andy Dalton's up there as well. They got one game left, remember? That's true. Russian show McCoy has got the most yardage. Uh, who's almost average? Who's actually running the ball? <laughs> Tyre Taylor, QB. Marshawn Lynch, I would say. There we go. Beast mode. And the most touchdown runs is by Ahmad Bradshaw with six. Fuck no. So he's having a good year so far. That's, uh, leaning on him in the red zone then. Oh, I guess they are. So yeah, there's, there's your top four there, top five. Todd Gurley's up there. Yeah, I was going to say, Lamar Miller, I'm surprised to see him up there. That must be why they win so many games. Receiving, Emmanuel Sanders uh, ties for the most uh, receptions. New player has the most yards. Um... Only two touchdowns. Yeah, only two touchdowns. Who's got most touchdowns then? Des Bright has five. Well, that doesn't surprise me really. He's a big target. And Travis Benjamin's got one as well. Joy Nelson. Well, he got two of them against us, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, Shane McClellan is leading the uh, NFL in, in tackles altogether with 51, which is just crazy. I mean, 41 solo tackles, man. What the fuck? I don't get that. <laughs> That's a lot. Everson Griffin has five and a half sacks. Oh god, excuse me, Justin Houston has five and our man Elvin, Melvin Ingram has four and a half. So we let him we let him go obviously for, to save money and he's doing a good job elsewhere. It's a shame they're bottom of their division though. Hmm, there is there is that. As for interceptions, we have two guys tied at three, so not many going on by the looks of it in the NFL. A couple of guys got two, but lots of guys got two, but other than that, not a lot going. Well, I don't know, three after four games is pretty good. Yeah, that is good going actually when you when you mention it. Yeah, because like the season normally is you finish on like six or seven. Yeah, so that's not bad after four games. So the very last thing we're going to do, guys, is we're go I'm just going to quickly show you two draft stories that we've got, so we can keep track of some of these players that we're looking at when cool. draft time comes. We've got Derek Boykin, who's left, who's uh, an Australian, who's now playing right guard for East Carolina, and he's moved from rugby, obviously, to do that. And Boykin Gilbert is a running back at Wisconsin, who apparently has uh, Olympic speed like his father. Uh, whether he's actually got the same speed or not remains to be seen. It just says that he's going to be follow he was was going to follow his father's footsteps. So, God knows. Scat back, maybe. Maybe. Right. So that's that, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was a little bit informative. Uh, and that's going to be it for this episode. So join us next week when we will be taking on the Steelers, who are bottom of their division, uh, nice. with a couple of couple of big name guys out. Yeah. For example, on the defensive line. So that'll be good for us. It will. So yeah. Hope you enjoy that, guys. And we'll see you here next week.